My entitled job bullies me out of working there, treating me like garbage and undervaluing my contributions to the company. So I decided to get revenge by quitting that job in the new year while also refusing to retrain anybody in my department. And as a result, I ended up costing my job millions of dollars and I've never felt better about getting revenge in my life. Here's what happened. So I started working in logistics at a company that builds things. And this is right when COVID was starting. When I started, we were five people in the team, but one of the guys quit soon after. This will be important later because it was a very good insight into how my department operates when they don't need or want certain people around. They will not outright fire you since they have to pay you a severance, but instead they will bully you into quitting. I saw pretty much the whole package, excluding them from meetings and important events, putting them down in public, lecturing them, never noticing any good work done, but always making sure that everyone knows about the work that isn't done well. My company would also drown someone in work and then start berating them when they inevitably can't keep up. It was outright childish at times. I didn't register it at the time, but it was a really valuable lesson later on. Anyways, I was put in charge of managing our overseas suppliers, among other things, and about half of our material came from overseas, most of that being from China. While it seems like a big task for someone new, it wasn't done out of malice. Genuinely, everyone believed we were going to get a guy in China for the Chinese supplies, and that I would be left for the handful of others. It really did seem fair, but we never got that guy from China, and I was left with all the overseas suppliers. Another important thing is that just in this project, the company had decided to change the workflow for overseas suppliers. This is because due to COVID, the price of shipping containers had exploded. Now, previously, the suppliers were responsible for filling our containers and bringing them to the harbor. We were responsible for picking them up from the harbor and then bringing them to us. However, due to demands and many other things, sometimes we needed two to three pallets of parts where a dozen or more could easily fit inside of a container. So we were shipping a lot of air. The new workflow would have the suppliers bring the parts to an external warehouse, one that was in the United States and one in China, and then we would load them into containers to get the containers as full as possible and then bring them to the harbor and then into our plant. And we did it this way so we could rent as few containers as possible. Now, as you can imagine, this complicated things greatly because it erased the direct contact from us to the suppliers. And there was no official method for how we were going to keep in contact with the suppliers. We couldn't even tell them how many parts we needed or how to package them or if we had any changes that needed to be requested. So I think you can understand how frustrating this would become. During that time, I was left mostly alone to deal with it. And I set up a system through a spreadsheet. It was mostly manual, rather simple, but it worked really well. It worked so well that one of the suits even chatted with me about it for a bit since he wanted to make it standard in future projects. And also, this will be very important later on, as I was the only person who actually knew all of our overseas suppliers and their contacts. And I think some of you might be able to tell where this story might be going already. So, during that entire time, nobody had actually bothered to ask me to explain to them how my system worked, or even where I kept track of all the supplier contacts. All of this data was hidden on slide 800 of some Excel file that I had saved in a folder titled Part Pictures, which was otherwise filled with pictures of different parts, so no one in their right mind would be able to find it. Now, moving forward, as COVID was really starting to slow down, the department, for whatever reason, decided they don't need me anymore. I have theories, but nothing certain, so I will just leave it at that. But I pretty much saw precisely the same thing go down as I had seen with that one guy who left very shortly after I started. And what I saw was straight up bullying. I thought to myself at first that if I pull through and keep doing a good job, and I believe that I did a good job, they would eventually cool down. But they didn't. And after two months of that, I said, you know what? Screw this. And decided to sit out and endure until the Christmas bonus that we get every single year. And then I would just hand in my notice. And also, I just delayed teaching anyone how my system worked until I was gone. And you know what? That's exactly what I did. I basically left without telling them a single thing. Eventually, I found a new job. And a month into working this new job, I get a call from my old job. It was the department manager. And to his credit, he was always a reasonable guy. He told me in plain words that they had no idea where to start with the Chinese suppliers. He then offered me my old job back with a very respectable pay raise. But I explained that I already had a new job. Well, fast forward to two days later and I got another call where the same manager offered me many times my monthly salary just to come in for one week and instruct my old team and how my process functioned, introduced them to all of my contacts 
this, as well as everything else that went along with the job. Well, I told him that I refused because of the way I had been treated by them when I worked there. He said that he understood and wished me luck in my new job and then hung up. Now, the whole reason why I'm writing this story now is that this week, I randomly got in touch with some people in the transport department for my old job. They mentioned that in the now 10 months since I left, the logistics department racked up eight-figure losses due to wrong deliveries. On top of over and under deliveries, outdated parts, some suppliers canceling their contracts, and new suppliers needing to be sourced. And best of all, all the blame fell on my old team. My new job is fine. It's not the best job, but I get to travel a lot, and I get nice bonuses for it. And you know what? Sometimes I do look back and regret not taking that offer for a week as an instructor. But either way, I'm still so happy that I got to have revenge on my old job. Yeah, that's a crazy way to get revenge. Not only did you ice these people out and cost them literally millions of dollars in the process, but you also refused to go back to train these people for what sounds like a very large chunk of money. And that is honestly hilarious to me. Like if these people really wanted you to stick around and train them, then they should have treated you better. And you know what? I can't stand when employers act like this towards their employees. Like, look, if I'm not doing a good job or if you don't need me, just pay the piper and pay me my severance and then I'll leave. But to bully someone and treat them like garbage while also making the work environment like impossible to deal with, that in my opinion is the mark of someone who should not be in management. But you know what? The original poster, in my opinion, did it all correctly. They waited until they got their bonus, they got through the new year, and they said, screw this, I'm out of here. And when that company and department was falling apart, they didn't go back to try and save them. And honestly, that's like the best kind of revenge you could possibly want. Because these people were straight up bullies. They treated you like garbage and then thought they could come back to you in some kind of like plea deal to make you fix their problems. But honestly, they brought this all on themselves. And if they had just treated you a little bit better, they probably could have saved millions of dollars in the process. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. My entitled friend is demanding that I hand over items I purchase online, all because I posted it on my Instagram story, and she feels that she's more entitled to it than I am. But after dealing with her obnoxious messages, as well as her awful attitude, I decided to block her entirely. And now I'm wondering if I made the right decision. Because at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So, to start things out, yesterday on Instagram, I posted a picture of items I purchased from a small black-owned business in my story. The small business owner always asks that her customers send pictures or videos to her of the items that we purchase and our honest opinions so that she can post them on her business page. And you know what? I did just that. Tagging the business owner and stating in the Instagram story that the items arrived quickly in perfect condition and they smelled wonderful, while also stating that I can't wait to use them. So anyways, the business owner had a buy one, get one free sale the week before last, prompting me to purchase these items with her. So I had a lot of items that I received, which were in the picture. Anyways, my friend by the name of Karen, that's not her real name, messages me in my story and says to me, pack up what you don't use and give them to me. And when Karen said this, I became annoyed, if not downright offended by this. So I told her, stop being greedy. I gave you several different gifts during your baby shower last week. I even told her that she should go get a job. Now, I don't feel like that was wrong because she came off as so entitled. So she continued messaging me. She said to me, your gifts weren't for me. That was for the baby. And I just said to myself, wow, that is so disrespectful. A baby shower gift is a present to the parents for the arrival of their unborn child. How could anyone say that it wasn't for them? I spent over $150 on gifts for her. And the thing is, she never even said thank you. That is until a minute after. And then she says, thanks for the gift. Only to then continue by saying, you have 15 of these items. So why not just give some to me? I tell her to stop it with the entitlement while also saying that I didn't post the picture for her on my story. And by the way, she's the only one of my Instagram friends who even commented on this. She continues sending me messages saying that the items I have will collect dust and that I should share it with her. She also said, who in the world would need all of that stuff anyways? Now, here's the thing. I've never discussed my personal finances with her, so she's kind of assuming that I come from some kind of money because I work and I have income coming in, unlike her who doesn't work at all. Eventually, I just stopped replying, I muted her, and then today, I blocked her. I would notice that during her pregnancy, she was alluding 
alluding to things that made me assume that she thought I would financially cover her and her child, which I absolutely would not. This is partly due because her unborn baby's father is kind of there and then he isn't, and she lives at home with her mom. I would give her plates of food because she would see my posts about my dinner on my Instagram story and then ask me for stuff. She even demanded that I bake her desserts because my stuff tastes that good. Honestly, I felt so offended at the entitlement. I just don't know if I was hasty, but I felt annoyed because I went out of my way to give two large bags of baby shower gifts to her and yet it still isn't enough. Like she acts as if I owe her something, which I absolutely don't. So honestly, did I make the right decision? I don't feel bad about it, but I wonder if it was the best choice because right now I'm at a loss and I seriously don't know what to do. Yeah, your friend sounds incredibly greedy. She is very clearly using you to try and get stuff out of you and that is so unfortunate. Like this is not a good friend. This is someone who just uses other people to get ahead in their life. Instead of getting a job and having some kind of income, she just saddles up next to her friends and starts demanding anything that they post on Instagram. Like seriously, how weird is that? Here you are posting like some stuff you bought online and then she responds in the comments and says, hey, give me some of that. I want some of it. Like no lady, go get your own. Can you seriously not get a job here? Like come on. So no, I don't think you did anything wrong. If I was in your shoes, I would have done the same thing because she really was being incredibly entitled and I definitely would never want to deal with that if I was in your shoes. My idiotic manager leaves me alone at a restaurant that I work at to not only bartend but also serve all of the customers that come into the restaurant on a Saturday after one day of training. But as a result of literally not knowing what I'm doing at this job, I ended up breaking down and starting to cry as I was so overwhelmed by all that was happening. Eventually leading to me never coming back to that job ever again. Here's what happened. So this happened to me about a week ago. I had gotten a new job as a bartender and server for Saturdays. In my interview, I told my manager that I had lots of experience in serving, but very little with bartending. But I was very willing to learn. Well, I got hired and they wanted me to start training on Friday. It was pretty slow that day and I didn't get fully trained on everything, obviously, as well as making certain drinks, but it went well. Keep in mind, I also had to leave during during lunch for a bit to pick up my car from the shop, so I wasn't even there for a full day. By the end of the day, my manager informs me that I will be all by myself the next day, bartending and serving. No hostess, no food runner, no busser. Literally, it was just going to be me. So obviously, I was really nervous. I was learning the point of sale system for the very first time, which was super confusing on my first day because the last restaurant that I worked at was cash only. They had a huge food menu, which I did not memorize one bit and there were specialty cocktails I wasn't even shown how to make. I told her that I was nervous about working by myself on a Saturday but she informed me that it shouldn't be too bad and I can call her at any time and I will have help from the casino runner from downstairs. Well fast forward to the day and I go into work hopefully thinking everything will be fine. It was pretty slow for the first couple of hours and I only asked for help a few times on little things. Then the lunch rush hits. I'm starting to get parties of four to six people people, walking in all within 15 minutes of each other. I was getting help with drinks I didn't even know how to make. I barely knew where anything was. I took forever putting in orders in the point of sale system because it was so new to me and I was continuously getting my orders and tables mixed up. Most of my tables were waiting on drinks and the rest were either waiting to order or just waiting for their check. Some of the cooks in the kitchen came out to yell at me in front of customers while I was trying my best to pay them out and get their drinks. When I arrived to the kitchen, I saw so many plates sitting in front of me waiting to be served. I then just broke down crying. Some of the nicer cooks were trying to help calm me down and were trying to tell me which dish was what, but that wasn't the problem. The problem was I had no clue which dish went to what table. I guess I accidentally rang in some orders twice. Some of them definitely were wrong. And the cherry on top of it is that I forgot you have to manually name all of your tables in the system before you send them off into the kitchen, which I definitely had forgotten to to do. So the majority of the tickets just said customer one, which literally could mean anybody. I just left the kitchen and went downstairs once again for help from the casino runner. She tried helping me as best as she could, but the damage that had been caused was pretty much non-repairable at that point, especially with just the two of us there. Now, I have worked some pretty horrifically busy and understaffed jobs before, but this was my worst nightmare come true. I tried the absolute best that I could with all the information that I had. I couldn't stop crying crying on the floor, and everyone was either looking at me with anger or pity. I was the most humiliated and embarrassed
embarrassed I'd ever been. I was eventually told to go home since I couldn't stop crying. And you know what? I never came back. This is one of the most popular restaurants in my area too, by the way. So when she said to me that it shouldn't be that bad on a Saturday, I should have said something right then and there, as she knew for a fact that I was new to the bartending and computer side of everything. And honestly, this was such a bad experience and I seriously am so embarrassed. Yeah, that manager needs to be fired. Here you are on literally your first day, managing the entire restaurant by yourself. Like this lady's a complete idiot for letting that happen. You don't know the system you're putting food into, and you don't know the bartending menu or even how to mix drinks. Like seriously, what were they thinking leaving you by yourself? Isn't there some kind of like, I don't know, probation period where they pair you up with another bartender or someone to train you for like two weeks just to make sure you can do something at this restaurant and be useful? Like honestly, that lady's a complete moron for putting you through that, and you absolutely did not deserve that. The original poster also went on to say that apparently this is a seat-yourself restaurant, so it's not like she organized any of this in the first place. People were just walking in and sitting down. And you know what? In my opinion, dealing with all of that by yourself probably was a nightmare. Like, there's literally no organization, there's no sort of, like, structure to who's sitting where, and you have this entire restaurant to figure out on your own. Oh, and on top of that, you have literally no support from anybody around you. Not even the kitchen staff is stepping up to the plate to help out, with some of them actually yelling at you in front of customers. Like, that is so unacceptable, it's not even funny. So truly, I'm so sorry you had to deal with that, and I'm so glad you didn't go back to that garbage, because that place sounds like an awful place to work, and you absolutely did not deserve to get treated the way that you did. Am I the jerk for not telling my boyfriend that I own the building that we currently live in? Because after he found out, he is incredibly angry, and I now seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So when I was 18, my dad gifted me a house with two stories. I am extremely thankful, and we are not upper class, but my dad bought this house for a cheap price a long time ago. It was his grandmother's cousin's house. I know that this was an extreme privilege, and I am forever grateful for this. The layout for this building is like an apartment, but it is a house. So basically, each story has its own separate entry, as well as its own kitchen and bathroom. I live upstairs while I rent out the downstairs. My boyfriend moved in with me about three months ago, and we have been together for six months. I have not asked him for money, neither for utilities or to pay me any rent. The only thing he contributes to is groceries, and that's something that we split 50-50. I have not brought up that I own the building, as it is not something that I tell many people. And if people ask me, I of course tell them that I own it. But if they just assume I'm a renter, then they can believe that if they want. The topic of a landlord, the renter downstairs, or the owner of the building has not been something that we have talked about. This last Tuesday, the renter came up to tell me that her freezer has stopped working. I answered the door and my boyfriend heard us talking, I suppose. I went downstairs to take a look and we came to the conclusion that she would buy a new one, send me the receipt, and I would give her the money. And she was very grateful for this solution. When I went upstairs, my boyfriend asked if it could be fixed. I told him no, but she was going to buy a new one and I would pay for it. He looked at me like I was crazy and asked me why in the world I would pay for her freezer. Well, I told him that because I'm her landlord and the freezer was there when she started renting, I would stand for the cost. He just asked me if I was serious, to which I said that I was. Now, once I told him this, he began screaming at me, asking me why in the world I would hold this information from him while also saying that I was an evil person. I said I was sorry for not telling him, but I did not think that it would matter. He said he could not believe he was together with someone who was a landlord, that all of us just use people for money, and that the only thing people like me who are landlords care about is money, and would rather have people be homeless than offering affordable rent. Now, here's the thing. The downstairs apartment is one kitchen, one bathroom, and four other rooms, and I only charge $500 for rent, so that definitely is very affordable. Now, I understand that many people have had trouble with landlords, but I try my best to be a good one. He then demanded that I give him 50% of the money I make from rent, or else I was just as bad as he thought. So honestly, was I really the jerk for not telling him? He has not talked to me since Tuesday, and I have tried telling him that I truly am sorry, but he doesn't answer me at all. What should I do? Yeah, your boyfriend is literally trying to play both sides of the fence. This guy's trying to come at you and be like, oh wow, I can't believe you're a landlord. All you care about is money, while also implying that you're super evil for having property. But also, literally in the same thought, this guy comes to you and then starts demanding 50% of the supposed evil money you're collecting, and that 
if you don't give it to him, then you're just as bad as he thought. Like, seriously, your boyfriend is an absolute jerk. Like, think about it. This guy immediately started screaming at you the second he found out you owned the building. Like, who in their right mind would react that way? That is such a huge red flag and such an extreme reaction. It's also really ironic that this guy would go off on some tirade and basically imply that landlords like you are making it so homeless people can't afford rent, but then turn around and this guy's living with you rent free. Like, what on earth is he grandstanding about? Like, this clown just needs to go back to the circus. This is virtue signaling at its worst. This guy doesn't mean anything that he's saying and he has no idea what he's talking about. So I can confidently say that not only is your boyfriend a loser, but this guy is an absolute leech and the jerk in this situation. He's trying to take 50% of your money from this house while also claiming that you're evil for collecting it in the first place. And I just can't imagine dealing with that level of hypocrisy as well as putting up with someone like that in your house. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.